three of the best selling consoles of all time are handheld consoles. I know it's crazy, but it's true. Handhelds are one of the most dominant categories in gaming, and as technology has progressed, we've seen the introduction of more powerful handheld devices. Right now, you can buy handhelds that are essentially cleverly constructed gaming PCs, but you can still get dedicated systems without all the power for playing classic games. Basically, the world is your oyster when it comes to handheld gaming right now, and we've gone ahead and put together a list of handhelds to throw in your carry-on bag next time you travel, no matter what your budget or gaming preferences. One caveat for the um actuallys in the comments, we didn't include the Nintendo Switch in this list. I know, I know, but it's, come on, it's such an obvious choice. Pretty much everyone who wants a handheld gaming device probably already has a Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch OLED model has one of the nicest, if not the nicest screen of any dedicated handheld right now. And honestly, I recommend upgrading if you're still rocking that launch day Nintendo Switch. Hey, pro tip, you can find just the OLED console without Joy-Con or dock on eBay and save big if you do decide to upgrade. The existing Joy-Con and original Switch dock are fully compatible, so why spend the extra money? Well, I, unless you absolutely need an Ethernet port. Smash competitors. Okay, enough about the Nintendo Switch and how it's just the obvious handheld choice. Let's look at some others that aren't currently sitting at number three on the all-time best-selling consoles list. The Evercade EXP is an interesting little device, one I was pretty skeptical of at first, but when I reviewed it, it won me over thanks to the charm of its distribution. I'm a huge fan of physical media. And Evercade games live inside chunky little game cartridges that remind me of, uh, well, I don't, I don't really know what the carts remind me of, but the plastic boxes are definitely a nod to old Master System and Sega Genesis games. The carts come with multiple games installed and some contain collections of classics, while others come loaded with modern retro inspired indies. It's all pretty awesome if you're a collector or, you know, someone who just loves inserting carts into handhelds. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But even without the carts, the Evercade EXP comes loaded with 18 Capcom games like Street Fighter II, uh, Breath of Fire, and the certified classic Mega Man X. One thing I really love about it is its Tate mode, which lets you turn the EXP sideways and play games vertically. It's perfect for shmups like 1943, letting you play them exactly as they were intended to be played. It's little touches like that that I really appreciate in my highly specialized enthusiast handheld gaming consoles. Oh, by the way, Evercade carts work across the EXP and the Evercade Versus or VS. Evercade VS, let's call it that. Uh, the VS is a traditional console, so you can play on your TV and then pop the card out, toss it into your EXP and take it with you on the go. I'm a sucker for this kind of thing and I really love how the carts and boxes look, but I'm also realistic enough to know this isn't a device for everyone. Now, if you have a library of old handheld games, but you don't want to buy the original systems, or worse, maybe you have the original systems, but they just don't work anymore. I'm looking at you, Sega Game Gear. The analog pocket is here to save the day. This honestly, one of the coolest retro gaming devices out there, capable of playing every Game Boy and Game Boy Color game right off the rip. But if you have Game Gear games or Neo Geo Pocket or even Atari Lynx games, you can buy cartridge adapters and play them too, all on a gorgeous screen and running on FPGA, which is a whole another video worth of explanation. But essentially, you're playing the games on hardware, not software emulation. The downside is you're pretty much limited to existing carts and homebrew games, and the price is made even higher by the fact these are hard to come by unless you want to pay premium prices on the secondary market. I'm a big fan of the analog line of products because they're the best way to play original games on modern hardware. 
The use of field programmable gate arrays instead of a software emulator means the games are running exactly as they should, which is very appealing to old nerds like me. But I also recognize this is a neat but niche product. With the addition of Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games to the Nintendo Switch Online service, yeah, there are easier ways to play old handheld games. The pocket is for the person who loves collecting physical cards, but also wants to play them, which is like a unicorn, I think. In other words, your mileage may vary. Cloud-based gaming is a promise that is still mostly just a promise, but devices like the Logitech G Cloud are making headway in the cloud gaming space. The biggest downside to cloud gaming remains, well, the cloud. On paper, cloud-based gaming is awesome. All the heavy graphical work is being done by some massive server farm in the middle of nowhere, giving you an experience you'd have to pay thousands of dollars to get from a gaming PC. The problem is all those pixels and polygons don't mean squat if you have a bad internet connection. So while you can stream games at eye popping levels of detail, if your router sucks, you're gonna experience lag and other performance related hiccups. Still, if you want a handheld device for use around your house or where you know you're gonna have a strong and reliable signal, the G Cloud is a solidly built device for cloud gaming services like Xbox or Nvidia GeForce Now. It handles its duties quite well when the signal is right, but ultimately it's a modified Android tablet, one that doesn't let you load up your own games. So it's only portable if you have a great internet connection. So it's not gonna be a lot of fun to pack in your carry-on bag for a long flight. I gotta be honest. When I reviewed the Steam Deck back when it came out, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Fast forward to today and yeah, I am on the Steam Deck love train. Many of the problems I had with it at launch have been ironed out and the slew of official and unofficial docks add an extra layer of functionality I didn't even think I wanted from the deck. Starting at 400 bucks, it's not cheap, but I would argue it's a fair price to pay for what you get. Games certified for use on Steam Deck work really well, and it absolutely changed the way I approach Grand Theft Auto V. Who knew GTA makes for an incredible portable experience? Not this guy. Add in the fact it has a Linux-based desktop, and this is closer to the computer John Connor uses in T2 to hack an ATM than it is to a Nintendo Switch. Note, that's not really true, and please don't hack into an ATM with your Steam Deck, even if your ginger mulleted friend needs arcade money. Easy money. Come on. Of all the devices I'm recommending today, I can honestly say the Steam Deck is the one I recommend above all the others. Now that it's established, the Steam Deck is just an awesome, portable way to play your Steam library on the go. Yes, it's still a Linux-based machine, one that doesn't have full compatibility with all the games, but if it's not close enough, and most of the best games you'd wanna play handheld are supported. Text-heavy games like RTSs aren't a great experience in handheld, but drop it on a dock, and now you're playing Stellaris on your 65-inch TV. Whoa! Whereas the Steam Deck is a competent Linux-based solution for gaming, the iNeo 2 or 3 or 4 maybe, or whatever new iteration they've decided to develop, kickstart, and release since I started filming this video, goes the direct route. It's a portable Windows gaming PC that fits into a sling bag. It's really kind of incredible, but by being Windows-based, all your Steam library will work without compatibility issues. You might still have a bit of a hard time reading text on its smaller screen, but a small price to pay to have it all. A large price to pay, however, is for the Aya Neo itself. The starting price on this whimsical Windows machine is a hefty $949, which is more than an entry-level gaming laptop. Being Windows-based is awesome, but there's a lot of stuff in Windows you don't need at all in a portable gaming handheld device. You could use it to replace a Windows machine, but that requires a monitor and a keyboard and mouse. And once again, 
why not spend that money and just get a gaming laptop or a decently equipped gaming PC? The iNeo is a much bigger flex than any of the other handhelds on this list, thanks to costing more than twice as much as the entry-level Steam Deck. I would argue though, you don't get twice the value, but if you wanna know with 100% certainty, all your PC games will run, and you prefer a handheld form factor to a gaming PC, this is the solution for you. So there you go. Five handhelds, each with various strengths and weaknesses, with something to fit your budget and your needs, although maybe not both. <laughs> are you a handheld gamer or do you prefer what consoles and PCs offer? Or are you fine with gaming on your TV, desktop, and in the palm of your hands? Let's hear it in the comments. For more handheld action, check out our review of the Ioneo 2, and for everything else, keep it right here.